Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, guys, and welcome back to my channel. I hope that you're having a beautiful day. If you're new here, hello, you're more than welcome. Please stick around, click the subscribe button, do all that stuff. Today's a little bit of a different vlog. I don't usually post stuff like this, but if you are, if you've been following the channel for a while, you know I have been suffering with an undiagnosed illness that has really been affecting me. I've been in so much pain. I've had irregular periods, heavy periods, um, bloating. They ruled out an ovarian cyst and they ruled out PCOS, but then I was told that I had to wait for this surgery. So basically, can't believe I'm filming this, but I finally got my date for when my surgery is. I finally got the letter through in the post and it is going to be on the 21st of December. So it's just before Christmas, which is great because it means I can go home, mum and dad can look after me and I'm not going to miss any work. So it's such a blessing and it's such God's timing. But yes, I have had to push so much to just even get this appointment for the surgery. And I will probably at some point do a whole nother story once I know what my diagnosis is. But essentially, it is to try and diagnose what's causing my pain. And because my scans and my bloods are all clear, the only thing left to do is go in for a laparoscopic surgery. So they base it's keyhole. Um, and they put a camera in and have a look around. And it is basically, they think I've got endometriosis, but every single doctor I speak to has a different response. So it's basically to find out what is wrong with me. <laughs> but yes, yeah, so I have my pre-op appointment on Monday the 5th. So I'm going to take you guys along with me. I'm going to be real and honest and raw. And I think when I was waiting for my surgery, these videos really helped me. So I just want to help someone else um i've no idea like by the end of this video you're gonna have a diagnosis and i i don't know what that is yet but i'll take you guys along with me and we'll see what happens today is the day that i have my pre-op appointment i'm just writing an essay to try and keep my mind off things um this is a christian worldview essay for those who are interested but i'm really nervous i have a cough i'm on the end of a cold basically and I'm just hoping that they don't turn me away from my operation and say I have to postpone it. I mean, it's in two and a half weeks, so I can't see why they would, because I'll have it shifted by then. But I'm just really hoping that all goes well. <laughs> okay, I'm just back from my pre-op appointment. My throat is very angry, so I don't want to talk too much. But they just did hate, hate, mm, good, height, weight, blood pressure, uh, body temperature. They did uh blood and i bled a lot of course they did my weight straight after i'd had my dinner by any chance but the woman was really nice um didn't really get that much information she basically just said that she didn't want to give me any inf information and answer any of my questions because the surgeon and the anaesthetist would have to answer them she didn't want to give me any answers which were wrong which was fair enough hi guys so i'm just editing this and something i forgot to say was that she told me to stop taking my supplements in case they interfere with my anesthetic so she told me i've been taking turmeric drops to help with inflammation i've been taking vitamin c zinc magnesium what else have i been taking that's it i think but she's told me to stop taking any um supplements just in case they interfere with the anesthetic so that might be something to be aware of if you have to go in for this operation okay guys i'm just accepting that this is going to be a long video i'm going to time stamp it so if you're not here for all the preparation stuff then you can get straight to surgery day it's six days now until my surgery and it feels very real obviously i am really hoping and praying that this gives me a diagnosis but there is still a real chance that it could not bring that and i don't want to build my hopes up so much on getting a diagnosis to then potentially be crushed if i don't because that was what it was like when i went for my ultrasound but i'm super blessed god has absolutely blessed me with the people in my life i have been watching all the youtube videos on trying to prepare for this i think what i'm planning on doing for so I spoke to the hospital um, and I asked them if it will be okay for me to drive home the day of my surgery. Obviously not me driving, my dad will drive because my mum and dad live an hour and 40 away from the hospital. But obviously it's four days before Christmas and my thinking is that I, I will have more pain medication in my system. Um, and I would rather just get 
down the road so that I can just be down the road and be looked after. And they said that medically they can't see anything wrong with that. The only thing is that I might be in quite a lot of pain and um, I might feel nauseous. But I've had the tip to put a, a pillow over my stomach to separate my incisions from the seat belt. I also think that I am going to pack my dungarees to the hospital because then there's no waistband. So that's what I'm thinking. Hi guys, so it is the day before. I've pretty much packed as much as I can today for tomorrow. And obviously, hopefully, God willing, I'll be going home as well tomorrow. So I've got my suitcase packed also got most of my hospital hospital bag packed but it's just stuff like toothbrush and tooth toothbrush toothbrush and toothpaste still to pack i'm starting to get nervous um the cough has gone praise the lord because that was just lingering for ages and i'm starting to get a little bit nervous because i just want to know what i've got and a diagnosis and I, my biggest fear is that I will go through all of this for nothing and there'll be no diagnosis. So I'm just praying for a diagnosis, but I'm also praying for a diagnosis that isn't too severe. But I'm just trusting God and giving it to him. But yeah, I don't think many people realise how tough this year has actually been. Um, obviously, the people closest to me have walked right by my side through it all and I'm so so grateful to each and every person who has and who's been praying for me and who's held my hand through everything and I'm just praying that I go into 2023 with an answer. I was told to drink one cup of water before 6 30. I'm scared. the surgeon and I spoke to the anaesthetist and they were so lovely, put my mind at ease so much. They said that if they find anything they'll remove it there and then. I don't know if you can hear me but we're gonna go with it. You heard it here first. I'll raise money by doing a half iron man. There you go, it's on the vlog. I'll get up off of this bed and I'll do it right now. But they won't let me. But watch me. There you go. Heard it here first. Oh, Percy Pigs. Thanks, Dad. Oh, no, nah, not Colin. Percy. This is the perks of having a hospital with an m and Thanks, Dad. And Lucas Aid, while you're there, please. Thanks. Okay, so I'm in the car, I'm waiting on my, my dad's just gone to go and get changed and my mum has gone to get coffee because they need a coffee for driving down the road. Um, I'm out, I'm alive, I have a diagnosis. They found endometriosis on my left side and they also found old endometriosis on my right side as well. So they burnt it off. My throat is really dry, but my mum and dad got me Percy Pigs. Calling the caterpillars and Luke's aid, and we're gonna drive down to Gretna. I feel a lot better than I thought I would, but yeah, I was on the ward, I was second on the list, and then I went through to the day surgery unit, and then, oh, um, and then I went into the, I walked into the anaesthetic room, had the lovely anaesthetist, she was so lovely. And she, her and another anaesthetist put me to sleep, woke up again in the day unit ward with a lovely, lovely nurse called Heather. She was absolutely lovely. I said some wild things to her. I was a little bit high and I fully remember everything I said to her. So yes, a um, bit embarrassing, but she was lovely and she was good crack. And then I was, I weed about an hour after my surgery, which was really good, but 
I was slamming back the water because my throat is so dry. So I weed and then I got food an hour after as well. And then I was ready to be discharged, but they didn't want to discharge me too soon, which is totally fair. They wanted to err on the side of caution. So they kept, they wheeled me back through. My mum was able to come through, but because it's a woman's only ward, it, my dad couldn't come through. So it might be worth taking a female with you if you can, because she was able to come through with me. But if it was my dad or Matt, they wouldn't have been able to come onto the ward because it's a woman only ward. So that was really nice to have someone to sit and chat to. Sorry, I want a Percy pig. Yeah, so that happened. We sat there for like two hours waiting on the time to come so that I could be sent home. Cause she was like, oh, you went in at half 12. I kind of don't want to discharge you until four o'clock. Cause I should give it so much time before you've eat, after you've eaten, after you've weed to make sure that you're all right. At which point I was slamming back the drinks, got up to wee like four times. So, yeah, I, pr I was a pro at weeing after surgery, um, which was such an answer to prayer. The whole thing was just an answer to prayer. I had lovely, lovely staff taking care of me. And yeah, now we're about to go home. We've got an hour and a half drive down to Gretna, which I might just pass out on. I might fall asleep, but yeah. Oh well, yeah, that hair is questionable. That's me back at my mum and dad's. The journey was nowhere near as bad as I thought. I'm so blessed and it's such an answer to prayer. I've not felt nauseous. My pain is only really, I think the painkillers really did a good job. And then at seven o'clock while we were still in the car, I was due paracetamol and ibuprofen. But so far I'm still on just paracetamol and ibuprofen. I'm going to take dihydrocodone tonight so that it knocks me out for sleep and I don't wake up in pain. I think tomorrow will be my worst day because I think I'm still buzzing from finally getting a diagnosis and like the pain like the coming around from the best nap of my life i think i'm still like processing it so i think tomorrow will be the day where it is a little bit tougher with pain and the painkillers that they gave me through the the cannula will start to ease but um yeah i um really want to rip this off because it's annoying me okay if you're squeamish look away now and just skip this because I'm going to show you the incisions that I've got. So this is the main one that they went through my belly button. And then I've got one, two either side. And I'm pretty swollen still. This is my first bit of home food. I was proper craving some garlic bread and soup. So I've got garlic bread, home alone two, and some homemade lentil and bacon soup. Okay, it is now Thursday morning. My throat still feels really sandpapery. I've wondered about to try and move around the gas because obviously by being lied, lying down asleep all day, all night, it has really like trapped the gas. In, but I can feel it moving around, so it is moving. I can definitely feel my incisions now. And strangely, my pain's more on my right side, which I don't really get because they did more work on my left. But it might just be the way I was sleeping or something, or I don't know. But um, yeah, my incisions are definitely healing because I can feel them going a lot tighter, um, which isn't the most comfortable thing in the world. But apart from that, I do feel a lot better than I thought I would feel. I'm just trying to mo keep moving around for my gas pain to try and move. That's why I'm wearing this to track how many steps. And me, typical me, I want to beat the next day's steps. So I didn't wear this yesterday, obviously. But... I've so far I've done 111 steps so I would quite like to get to a thousand today um if I can but I don't want to push it too much um because I think moving around really is going to help with the gas pain so far I haven't took any peppermint and it's not bad like I feel it in my right shoulder but when I came around I was very burpy so I think I got most of it out then and the other thing is my whoop oh my throat I'm I've been really intrigued to see what my whoop does now on the journal for whoop there's no actual log for surgery so I've just put it in my notes mm. and my resting heart rate is completely normal for me my HRV my heart rate variability is low but it's higher than it was the night before I went into surgery which is natural because of the anxiety around going for surgery but the fact that it's up from that is really really good 
So I'm going to just keep tracking that because I think that'll tell me about my recovery at the end of the day. HRV will be the key one. But yeah, I think those are the two things just by just as an athlete. I'm using to monitor recovery. I don't want to overdo it. Obviously, I'm aware that Christmas is soon, so I want to be able to be present at Christmas. So um, I want to try and recover the best I can. And yeah, I'm just about to read my book. It is now 6.50. I woke up, my sleeping pattern's all wacko because of that anaesthetic. And it's really interesting because I woke up five minutes before I needed to take painkillers like through the night. So my body obviously knew that it needed painkillers then. Um, so I'm just trying to stay on top of pain management and stay on top of it. So what I'm doing is I'm taking just paracetamol, ibuprofen, um, and then morning I'm taking dihydrocodone and at night I'm taking dihydrocodone. And then hopefully I can do just nighttime dihydrocodone or just morning because I think the key is going to be getting that rest. So I do eventually want to just do one dihydrocodone, but the problem is that you can only take four lots of paracetamol ibuprofen during the day. So that means that not every four hours would be covered in the day, if you get me. So, yes, that's my plans at the moment. I'm going to sit this hot, hot Vimto and read my book. And, yeah. Day one. <laughs> can almost do a half marathon. Hey, guys. Um, It probably looks like I've not moved, but I have. Um, I had breakfast it's now currently lunchtime my mum is making carbonara i am plowing my way through this book i want to finish it today garden city by john marcoba 10 out of 10 would recommend it's been an incredible book had a nap and it was such a good nap i got sent some lovely flowers for from some friends all in all i feel all right um my incisions are definitely healing and it's getting a little bit tighter um and i'm not looking forward to taking those bandages off and cleaning it tomorrow but um that's for tomorrow to worry about the gas is definitely moving around i think walking has definitely helped i've done over 600 steps so i'm well on my way to my thousands that was my goal for the day but it, moving around is definitely helping the gas move um after my nap it was really con like it was congested under my ribs um especially on my right side so i found walking around really helped that and i've been a bit burpy ever since so it's definitely moving and yeah, I can definitely feel it moving. Now, my pain isn't as bad as I, what I thought it would be. Obviously, like, I'm a bit sore, but it's nothing compared to what I had before this surgery. Um, Like, I don't feel like I'm being stabbed. Like, I'm not curled up in a ball crying. Like, it's, it's, it's uncomfortable, but it's nothing compared to the pain that I felt before they remove the endometriosis. So um, all in all, I'm really happy. One thing I have just remembered is that people talk about bleeding after having endometriosis surgery. Um, and I didn't know whether or not I'd have that. With my new pill that I'm on, um, I changed from the combined to the mini pill. Since that, I haven't had a period, but I have had like spotting since my surgery but it's kind of slowed and pretty much gone now um today so that is another thing like I'm just being honest um so I've had another nap I just had the best nap of my life aside from when I was under I'm having a smoothie because I feel like I want fruit and it's nice and soothing on my throat and I finished my book so I have walked so far, I've walked 1,162 steps, so that's ticked. I've finished my book, ticked. I've wrote, a uh, wrote an email, so that's ticked. I've ticked off pretty much everything I wanted to achieve today. And I think that the way that I want to move forward with this recovery is setting goals each day. So tomorrow, I want to aim for more steps. So maybe 1,500, depending on whether I meet 1,500 today. But I think the way forward for me, being an athlete and being used to having goals, and the way to keep motivated with recovery is to have goals. Tomorrow I want to have my first shower. I want to change the dressings. But yeah, so far I feel okay. And it feels manageable. I'm trying to keep on top of my pain meds. Um, which is definitely helping. Okay guys, it's day two of recovery. Last night I woke up and I could feel my insides had been rummaged around. in, And it was not the nicest. But this morning when I woke up like so that was around 4am when I was due painkillers 
but this morning I woke up and I feel a little bit better. I think moving around really has helped me, but I also don't want to overdo it. So I'm just going to play it by ear. I am going to try and have a shower today and change my dressings. That's my goal for the day. And I get to see Matt today. I'm so excited. And yeah, another chill day. I'm just trying to listen to my body and rest. Um, this is not a very good angle, but we'll go with it. My throat is still sore and dry, but I'm on the soothers and doing good. Okay, so I just had a shower and um, cleaned myself. It's a very humbling experience at 22 to be helped into a shower by your mother. Um, thanks, mum. Um, but actual having a shower was fine. Yeah, make sure someone's with you when you have your first shower to help you in and out. Um, the actual showering was fine. I got my dressings wet so that they were easier to peel off. But what I should, what I think I should have done was had a shower, dried off, then got into bed to change the dressings because I took one off and, um... Sorry, this might be TMI, but um, all the dried blood had, like, stuck to the plaster. So peeling it off was a little bit nasty and gunky. And um, I got one off fine. And the second one, I just started feeling really lightheaded, was about to pass out. And what I should have done was I should have laid down and got mum to do it rather than me. But, yeah, make sure someone's with you when you do it. But now that they're all, like, they're clean, they're... I've changed the dressings on them, which I'm a little bit happier about. They've done a really nice job on my stitches. I've got a lot of congealed blood in my belly button, which I'm sure will go away um, eventually. But yeah, it wasn't a pleasant experience. So I'm probably going to go for a nap now. But I smell so much better. And mum's washing my nighty, so I've just got one of Matt's old tops. Day four, and it's Christmas Eve. Um, I slept so much better last night. I only woke up at five in pain, um, which was roughly when my painkillers were wearing off. So that was really, really good. I'm so glad that I'm starting to get more sleep. Hopefully that means that I won't need to sleep as much during the day. So um, that's really, really good. That's progress. Yesterday, yeah, the shower really knocked me a bit, like mentally. Um, it, it just threw me a bit because... I was quite positive up until then, and then obviously I started feeling dizzy, and yeah. But today's a new day. What is this hair doing? I get to see family today, because it's Christmas Eve, and Matt is down, so I get to see him as well. So that is good. Today is hopefully going to be a good day. And yeah, the goal is just to be positive and spend time with family, and maybe, yeah, see how I feel. Okay, I'm not really too sure what day this is. I think I said yesterday was day four, but I think today's day four. I was operated on the 21st and it's Christmas day, so happy Christmas. But I don't know if that includes the day of. So technically, if it was the day of, today is day five. But yeah, anyway, I'm feeling a lot better today. My incisions don't feel like they were really itchy yesterday, which means that they were healing. My belly button's still quite itchy, but the two on the side feel a lot better. Like I feel so much less like like I have to tiptoe around kind of thing so um obviously I'm still being careful but I feel a lot better in myself I also went for a number two finally at 2 a.m this morning of all times and I was getting a little bit worried but I've been yeah I've been quite smart like I've had a smoothie every day I've been on stool softeners stool stool softeners um so I've been trying to be quite smart with it. Today is Christmas, so I'm going to get dressed for the first day. I'm just going to put some dungarees on, I think, because they're loose. And last night I slept so much better. So all in all, I'm definitely recovering. Yesterday I only had one nap, so that was a tick off in the right direction. I also only had one dihydrocodine instead of two. Um, so that is a tick in the right direction. So today I'm going to try and just have one dihydrocodone again and hopefully I can wean off them. And yeah, probably just one nap as well today. Um, but my steps are going up, which is good. So I did 1400 plus steps yesterday. 
um i'm already at 600 and it is 10 past 10 so um i'm gonna take over i'm gonna try and take over 1500 today i think but yes it's christmas so i'm very excited and it's i'm so glad that i'm feeling a little bit better for christmas day okay guys it is boxing day it is day five day six do we count the actual day of the surgery i'm sure i've already said this on the vlog but i have no idea what day it is but it's the day after yesterday and i slept through the night didn't need to wake up to take paracetamol eye proof didn't need to wake up to ask for a hot water bottle slept through the entire night so i feel like a new person i took no dihydrocodone yesterday and yeah i feel like i'm starting to move a bit now like i'm I'm definitely getting there. I nearly got 2,000 steps yesterday. So yeah, yesterday was a big win and I just took one nap again. So that is good. Um, I wonder if I'll need a nap today after having slept the whole night. It'll be interesting to see because um, I think the dihydrocodone was making me very drowsy. So yes, it'll be interesting to see. I have washed my hair. It was an absolute rat's nest. So it feels good to have had that washed and i changed the dressings on my incision and they are healing up nicely especially the ones on my side i'm so impressed with how small they are and they're gonna be like there's gonna be barely any scar there so i'm really really happy with that yeah today is just another chill day i'm hoping to go for a walk outside today um just a little shuffle but yeah i'm pretty happy with how things are going Hi guys, it is day six post-surgery, feeling really good. Um, I didn't take a nap yesterday, I don't know how much I filled you guys in on, but um, today my belly button's really, really tight, which means it's healing, which is good. I'm currently in the process of writing a complaint against the gynecology ward that I was admitted to in May. Basically, they discharged me and told me that there was nothing gynecologically wrong with me. Now, obviously, having received a diagnosis of endometriosis, I, like, know it's a gynecological issue. So hopefully that helps other women and it helps to maybe make a change in the way that things are dealt with. And, yeah, on average, it takes eight years in the UK to be diagnosed with endometriosis. So I am one of the fortunate ones. And yeah, mine felt like a long time. So hopefully I can maybe make a change for other women and they hopefully won't be able to be treated the way I was. Um, I want to ring the doctors tomorrow to get a copy of the discharge letter that I was discharged with, obviously, in May. So yeah, I am currently putting my energy into that and I'm going to have a chill day again today. I'm just allowing my body to heal. I'm not used to sitting around and resting. So hopefully that means that my body will be heal a bit quicker. But yes, that's the plan for today. I feel so much better for having washed my hair yesterday. Hey guys, so it is uh, six days post-op still. Um, I have had a really lazy day. My incisions have just been so tight and tender, especially my belly button. My sides have been all right. I think they've mostly healed. They've been a little bit tender, but I think it's mostly my belly button. But my belly button has just been so tight. Like, I feel like I've been too scared to straighten up. And yeah, hopefully that means that the worst of the healing is gone. And hopefully tomorrow's a better day. I stayed in my nighty all day today. So it was a little bit of a step back, but recovery is never going to be linear and it's never going to be all uphill so that's okay um hopefully tomorrow is a little bit of a better day and hopefully i can get out okay guys ignore the state of my hair it's a bit tatty but i feel so much better after a good night's sleep my belly button feels like it's healed a little bit from yesterday which is great because it was so uncomfortable um so i'm dressed today i'm hoping that when there's a gap in the rain i'll go for a walk outside um but i already feel so much better and to top it all off there's still uh, smoked salmon so i'm having smoked salmon scrambled egg for breakfast so that's unreal um i'm gonna have a shower tonight i think to wash this and to change my dressings but i'm gonna leave it till tonight just because i mean i'm dressed now so can't really be bothered but yeah, there's not really much to report today so far. Feeling pretty good, actually. 
but yes feeling a lot better today which is really really good come for a walk with me dad okay guys we're on day eight i had a shower all by myself changed my dressings all by myself that shouldn't really be an achievement should I? <laughs> just telling youtube that i can shower by myself well done so today i'm gonna go out for a meal with my granddad so that's a big step i'm excited hopefully get some good food hopefully i mean it's just sitting at a table so it shouldn't be that bad um and then i'll hopefully get let's see if we can get a k today if the rain and the wind dies down because it's a bit grim outside the first dog walk kind of i'm like two steps back <laughs> Hi guys it is day nine um i'm feeling a lot better today every single day i feel like i'm slowly getting there my incisions feel a lot better today they don't feel as tight or annoying i also went for a dog walk again i went 200 meters further so that's um getting in the right direction i'm still resting um i'm reading i finished my book and i'm now on to this one and it is the doctor will see you now and it's so so good for anybody with endometriosis i 10 out of 10 recommend this book but yeah that's all i really have to report today um i say all i mean it was a win to go out for a walk my whoops telling me i'm on 25 percent recovery which i'm kind of raging about because i feel so good today but also yesterday was a big day like i went out and did a walk so yeah it, it might be true it might not but we'll see <laughs> hey guys so it's day 12 and as you can see i'm back in sterling back at home so i'm super glad to be able to function on my own now um i've just got all the unpacking but matt's gonna help me with the heavy lifting because obviously i still can't do that um so yeah it's just a waiting game for them to for my incisions to heal but they're nearly there um they will not be long i don't think so um yeah hopefully within the next couple of days the stitches might dissolve i will have a shower tonight and change the dressings i'm still keeping the dressings on more like the dressings don't need to be on but it's more to protect them because a lot of my clothes have been rubbing lately so it's just to protect them and keep them protected <laughs> But yeah, I'm going to go ahead and finish this video here. I will give you guys an updated video in the next couple of weeks as to what's going on and how I'm doing and the like how I'm going to be moving forward um, to prevent the regrowth of endometriosis. Um, I want to leave a link to Endometriosis UK in the description. Please go and check them out if you if you have the money it would be great if you could donate as well because they are an amazing charity that are trying to um support the research behind endometriosis support the funding behind uh, endometriosis um and do all that within the uk so they're a uk specific charity and yeah if you have any questions feel free to comment below i've been quite transparent if you've made it the whole way through the video then i'm guessing that you're going for surgery at some point let me know how you're feeling for it um if you have any questions i'm happy to help i really had a lot of questions throughout my recovery that i didn't expect to have that i just asked random people um that i didn't really know so i am more than happy to try and answer any questions obviously i'm not a medical professional but um from experience um and yeah i hope that you have a great day um and please give this video a thumbs up click the subscribe button if you want to see more from me obviously there will be more endometriosis related content but there will also be a comeback to training content as well as i ease back into training after recovery so Yes, um, I hope that you have a good day and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.